Well, hello, my friends. We continue our journey in comparative analysis. And in this uh, little video, we're going to examine a process to examine a data set to see if it is normally distributed. And normality being measured through two, two coefficients, the kurtosis and the skewness coefficients. Now, I want you to re recall that uh, normality is not only an assumption for ANOVA, it's an assumption for a t-test. It turns out it will be an assumption for a MANOVA. So the process of measuring normality is not unique just to ANOVA. It's just that I've chosen to represent it here while we're looking at ANOVA and explain it to you. Uh, if you recall on, a, on ANOVA, the dependent mirror variable must be normally distributed with no extreme outliers, and you must possess homogeneity of variance. Now, I've not freaked out much with homogeneity of variance because when you go into ANOVA and you click on the things you want, it does a Levine's test for homogeneity of variance, meaning that the curves have the same size standard deviations or the same size variance. The well, reason that I'm kind of freaking out on is it normally distributed with extreme outliers is because that, that, this is not done in where you do ANOVA. Normality fits on many other methodologies. Therefore, it has kind of a unique way of going in and, and taking a data set and examining it for uh, kurtosis and for skewness. Now, we will also check the effect size and the power of the analyses we will do this in a subsequent video. Uh, remember that with ANOVA, we have two or more groups. We're looking at the same variable with values for each group, va variable or value one. Those values must be normally distributed, or that variable must be. And you notice that I put the curve up there with the value of the dependent variable, so you remember that the dependent variable is the one that we're checking for normality. The group may be a uh, uh, a nominal grouping, so there wouldn't be any need to check for uh, 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 any normality in its distribution. Normality is generally examined via two techniques. The first of these is kurtosis, which examines the centricity of the data around the mean. In a normal distribution, the bell curve comes up, and the data not only cluster around the mean, but they they do that in a frequency within so many standard deviations on each side of the mean. What kurtosis does is it examines the data to see if they are, within those, those standard deviations, are they too close to the mean or are they too far from the mean? Or do they fit the mean within the standard deviations as they should? Uh, we'll examine that more. Skewness examines the curve to tell if the curve is centered on the mean, is it left shifted or is it right shifted? Now, kurtosis speaks to the relationship of the data to the mean, while skewness examines the distribution to see if it is centered on the mean. Three types of kurtosis may be utilized to explain a data set. The first of these is leptokurtic, which means that the data uh, really hit in the center and raise up real high around the mean, and then they're spread out on the wings. That spreads the standard deviation, but it makes the data in too close to the mean with the outliers on the wings. The next one is, is platykurtic, which means it's flatter around the mean with outliers on the wings. And the one that you're actually looking for is mesokurtic, which means it fits the normal distribution. Now, at least you panic. Uh, you, these, these terms uh, you can use. I mean, yeah, you can use them with your friends to impress them. But the neat thing about these terms and these situations is, is that a coefficient will tell us whether it's too sharp or whether it's too spread. Remember, kurtosis examines the centricity of the data around the mean. The, uh, the, the kurtosis coefficients will be provided as, as follows. The leptokurtic, which is sharper than a normal distribution around the mean, means that your kurtosis coefficient is greater than three. Uh, the platykurtic, which means it's flatter uh, with, with wings out on the edges, means that your kurtosis is less than three, and then the mesokurtic, which is really fitting the normal distribution, is three. Now, keep in mind, no data set is ever exactly three. Of course, I'll say that, and the first data set we examine will be that, with my luck. Uh, but, but anyway, it never really is exactly three. What this means is, is that as you move away from a kurtosis coefficient of three, 
either falling uh, below it or above it, then what you have is a data set that is less normally distributed. Now, the other variable that we look at is called the skewness coefficient. And uh, there are three types of skewness. It can be left-centered, it can be right-skewed, or, or it can be centered exactly in the middle. Now, if it's skewed to the left, all of the data are out here on the left with an extreme on the variable on the right. If it's skewed to the right, they're out on the right with one on the left. But if, it is, if your skewness coefficient is what it should be, that means the data are centered on the mean. Remember, skewness examines the centricity of the data around the mean. Well, hello, my friends, again. We're right back here, and our goal will be to examine kartosis and look at skewness. Now, you recall, you recognize this data set, the percent women in the group. We have three groups. We're looking at percent women across those three levels of community college in Texas, public, private, and and for profit. Now, let's go up to analyze. If we were going to do an ANOVA, we would go down to compare means and do the one-way ANOVA. And if we did that, we would, we would find that it does not provide us anywhere in there to where we can uh, look at kurtosis, nor can we do uh, skewness. So let's go to analyze. Let's go down to descriptive statistics, and we will, ex we will select frequencies. Now, what we're going to do, our variable, is going to be our percent women. That's the one that we're worried about, the dependent variable. Let's go over here and let's see what it says. It gives us some chance for statistics. We can do the mean, the median, the mode. That's not bad, is it? We can get the standard deviations and all of those if we want. But look over here, distribution, uh, skewness, and kurtosis. We want that. Let's go to charts. Let's do some histograms so we can see what it actually looks like. And we push the magic OK. And now we should have a very powerful readout. And it's hard edit. Now we will take just a few minutes to examine what we obtained from extracting kurtosis and skewness from the frequency menu. Now, you're going to get some things that you'll already have. I mean, but look here, we have, we have the mean. Let me pull that up so you can see it. We have the mean, we have the median, and we have the mode that tells us a little bit about it. Now, look at the skewness variable, negative 0.842. Now, what do, we, what do we recall about skewness? See, that tells you which way that it's skewed. It's a, it's a little bit... Uh, uh, skewed to the side. It's not centered exactly on zero. Kurtosis, uh, 1.934, it's a little bit off of uh, the mean as well, back to, back to shift it out a little flatter. Let's see if we can go down and look at the picture that we have of that so you can actually see what it looks like. Well, lo and behold, it is shifted. Let's see, the mean is 64.65. The mean would be somewhere right here. You notice that there's a lot of tightly packed uh, information right there around the mean. And then you've got some outliers out here, and you've got some heavy data out there. It's, uh, it's not normally distributed. It's really not bad, but give you a pretty good uh, idea of what the data set looks like. Well, before I end this video, I just wanted to show you this histogram again of the distribution of our our data for the percentage of females. Our, our kurtosis uh, indicates to us that it is a little flatter than, than perhaps a normal curve. The reason being that you've got spread out here and spread over there. And of course, we can see that it's kind of shifted a little bit, perhaps to the right, though not far off of, of normal at a negative 0.8 with the skewness coefficient. So we, we're, we're not normally distributed, but we're not bad either. Could be, a, could be a whole lot worse. Those values really aren't too bad. Now, just in closing, I want to thank you again very much for your support. It's been a lot of work to get this far, hadn't it? But I'll tell you what, you keep plugging, you're going to climb right on up the old dog's ladder and be out of here. Soon as you finish ANOVA, then you have MONOVA, and then non-parametric design to go. May the odds be ever in your favor.